who sighed and gave them to my father Pelias, who in his turn gave them to myself, but I shall hold aloof, and I my steeds that have lost their raven kind of driver, who many a time has washed them in clear water and anointed their manes with oil. See how they stand weeping here, with their manes trailing on the ground in extremity of their sorrow. But do you others say yourselves in order throughout the host, whosoever has confidence in the horses and in the strength of his chariot, thus spoke to Pelias, when the drivers of chariots disturbed themselves first among them all rose Eumelius, king of men, son of Hadamantius, a man excellent in horsemanship. Next to him rose mighty Diomedes, son of Tydeus. He yoked head to the Trojan horses, which he had taken from Aeneas when Apollo bore him out of the fight. Next to him, yellow haired Menelaus, son of Petrius, rose and yoked his fleet horses, Agamemnon's mare Aethi, and his own horse, Pedargus. If the mare had been given to Agamemnon by Echelopolis, son of Anchises, that he might not have to follow him to Pulium, but might stay at home and take his ease, for Zeus had endowed him with great wealth, and lived in spacious Sicyon. This mare, all eager for the race, did Menelaus put under the yoke, forth in order, and Tilicus, son of noble Nestor, son of Nellius, made ready his horses. These were red in Pylos, and his father came up to him to give him good advice, of which, however, he stood in a little maid, and Tilicus, said Nestor, You are young, but Zeus and Poseidon have loved you well, and have made you an excellent horseman. I need not therefore say much body weight of instruction. You are skillful at wheeling your horses round the post, but the horses themselves are very slow, and it is this that I will fear of your chances. The other drivers know less than you do, but their horses are fleets, or therefore, my dear son, see if you do not hit upon some artis, whereby you may ensure that the prize shall not slip through your fingers. The woodman does more by skill than by brute force. Uh, the skill highly guides his storm, toss the bark over the sea, and so by skill one driver can meet another. If a man go with him wide, rounding his way in that, whereas a man who knows that he is doing may have whole horse horses, but he will keep them well in hand when he sees the doubling post. He knows pretty size moment at which of all the rain, and keeps his eye well on the man in front of him. I will give you a certain token which you not escape your notice. There is a stump of a dead tree, ogre pine, as it may be, some six feet above the ground, and not yet brought it away by rain. It stands at the fork of the road. It has two white stones, set one on each side, and there is a clear course all round it. That may have been a monument to someone long since dead, or maybe used as a doubling post in the days gone by. Now, however, it has been fixed on by Achilles, as the mark round which the chariots shall turn. Give it as close as you can, but as you stand in your chariots, lean over a little to the left, urge on your right hand, horse with voice and lash, and give him a loose rein. The let the left hand horse keep so close in, and the neck of your wheel shall almost graze the post. But mind the stone, or you will wound your horses and break your chariots in pieces, which would be sport for others of confusion for yourself. Therefore, my dear son, mind well what you are about, for if you can be first around the post, there is no chance of anyone giving you the go by later, not even through you had had your spaces. Horse Arion, behold you, a horse which is of divine race, or those of the Lamedon, which are the noblest in the country. When Nestor had made an end of counseling his son, he sat down in his place, and fifth in order, Moronis, got ready his horses. They then all mounted their chariots and cast lots. Achilles shook the helmet in the lot of Antilochus, son of Nestor, fell out first. Next came of the king Eumelus, and after this, those of Menelaus, son of Petrius, and of Moronis, the last place of the lot of Diomed, son of Tideos, who was the best man of them all. They took their places in line. Achilles showed them the doubling post round which they were to turn, so we off the, on the plain. Here are the station his father's follower, Phoenix as umpire, to note the running and report truly. At the same instant, they all of them lashed their horses, struck them with the reins, and shouted at them with all their might. They flew full speed over the plain, away from the ships. The dust rose from under them as it were a cloud of whirlwind, and their manes were all flying in the wind. At one moment, the chariots seemed to touch the ground, and then again they bounded into the air. The drivers stood erect, and their hearts beat fast and furious in the lust of victory. Each kept pulling on his horses, and the horses stirred the plain amid the clouds of dust that they raised. It was when they were doing the last part of the course on their way back towards the sea that their place pace had a strain to the utmost, and it was seen what each could do. The horses of the descendant of Paris. Fears now took the lead, and close up behind them came of the Trojan stallions of Diomed. They seemed as if it had about to mount Eumelius, chariot, and he could feel their warm breath on his back and on his broad shoulders, for their heads were close to him as they flew over the course. Diomed would have now passed him, or there would have been a dead heat, but Phoebus Apollo, despite him, made him drop his whip. Tears of anger fell from his eyes as he saw the mares going on faster than ever, while his own horses lost round through his having no whip. Athena saw the trick which Apollo had played the son of Tydeus, so she brought him his whip and put spirit into his horses. Moreover, she went after the son of Admetus, and her rage and broke his yoke for him. The mares went one to one other side of the course, and the other to the other. The pole was broken against the ground. Eumelius was thrown from his chariot close to the wheel. His elbows, mounds, mouth, and nostrils were all torn, and his forehead was bruised upon his eyebrows. His eyes filled with tears, and he could find no utterance but the son of uh, Ty Deus and turned his horses aside and shot far ahead for Athena, put fresh strength into them, and covered Diomed himself with glory. Menelaus, son of Petrius, came next behind him, and Tilicus called to his father's horses, On with you both, he cried, and do your very utmost. I do not bid you try to beat the steeds of the son of Ty Deus, for Athena has put running into them and has covered Diomed with glory. But you must overtake the horses of the son of Petrius and not be left behind of Aphi, who is so pleased, will taunt you. Why, my good fellows, are you lagging? I tell you, it shall surely be. Nestor will keep neither of you, but will put both of you to the sword. If we win, any of the worst surprise through your carelessness, fly after them at your utmost speed. I will hit on a plane for passing them in the narrow part of the way, and it shall not fail me. 
They feared the rebuke of their master, and for a short space went quicker. Presently, Antilochus saw a narrow place, where the road had sunk, the ground was broken, for the winter's rain had gathered and had worn the road, so that the whole place was deep, and Menelaus was making towards it, as so as to get there first, or fear foul. But Antilochus turned his horses out of the way, and followed him a little on one side. The son of Hadrius was a afraid, and shouted out, Antilochus, you are driving recklessly in rain of your horses, though the road is too narrow here, it will be wilder soon, and you can pass me then. If you foul my chariot, you may bring both of us to a mischief. But Antilochus plied his whip and drove faster.